June 6, 2006, at 6 p.m., the exact date and hour that many conspiracy theories said was going to be on the gang day. It was also the day I had a test, so I was hoping for the worst. I fell asleep trembling with pensive thoughts of waking up to an inferno of screaming people and a blood-covered sky. But like all other predicted doomsdays, it was just another day. It seems humans have a fascination depicting how the world went, and I can truly say, surviving 2012 has been one of my greatest accomplishments. But now I am bestowed to believe that the future does not look so bright due to the overrising claims of global warming. But is global warming real, or just another conspiracy? We as living human beings breathe, therefore, when we exhale, we produce carbon dioxide. When you turn on the stove or turn on the or your computer, you're using up gas and electricity, which both produce carbon dioxide. So we are all secretly contributing to global warming. There are about 7 billion people living in the 21st century, almost all able to flick a switch or heat a stove. So shouldn't we all be seeing serious effects of global warming by now? In my lifetime, I've, wit I've witnessed natural catastrophes via television, such as the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake that caused a lethal tsunami. 2005, a hurricane that hit New Orleans that practically isolated New Orleans from the rest of the world. And 2011, on a 9.0 earthquake that hit the Pacific coast of Japan, producing a 33 feet high tsunami. Um, catastrophes that some scientists have blamed to have been caused by human beings through the disguise of global warming. But is global warming really the blame for natural disasters and climate change? The world's climate has been changing, and throughout history, catastrophes have happened naturally. Therefore, we cannot suggest that global warming is the cause for current natural disasters and climate change. Today, I will talk about climate, natural disasters, and carbon dioxide. Winter season and summer, and spring season and fall, perfect weather, right? No? Well, some scientists have said that global warming is making our weather more unpredictable, causing more disasters due to the high levels of carbon dioxide, which is above 350 ppm. But the weather has always been unpredictable, and even worse in the past. The weather was terrible in the past, back when carbon dioxide was below 350 ppm, so global warming should not be blamed for extreme heat slash cold or drought. Is the world going to embrace a new ice age, or is it going to be a living heat hell? Global warming should really make up its mind. But extreme conditions have been happening throughout history and are just natural phenomena. And in an article posted on foxnews.com by Maxim Law on April 30th, 2012, says that in 1780, New York City experienced extreme cold that the rivers around Manhattan froze for over five weeks. British troops occupying the city at the time built fortifications, a defensive wall on the ice. The ice was strong enough to hold men on horsebacks. Um, many scientists also argue that greenhouse gases have made extreme heat events more common. One, but some scientists note that extreme heat events are nothing new. Um, one newspaper report that on July 9, 1921, the temperature in New York rose to 107 degrees. In Washington, D.C., a carefully broken egg on an asphalt pavement was completely fried in nine minutes. The deadliest heat wave in U.S. history also occurred long ago, in 1936, causing 5,000 deaths nationwide. 24 states have set their all-time temperature records in the 1930s. Only one state, Arizona, has set an all-new temperature record since the turn of the millennium. Many also fear that the world's drinking water is becoming less and less due to global warming. But the worst drought in U.S. history took place in the 1930s as well, um, destroying many crops in the Midwest, later named the Dust Bowl, as 2.5 million Americans abandoned their farms, all by unpredictable climate changes. Now that I've talked about climate, I will now talk about natural disasters. <clears throat> I'll admit, there have been a lot of earthquakes and hurricanes over the past years, but the world is about 4.54 billion years old, humans have been around for 100,000 years, and natural disasters have only been recorded for the past 100 years, so we cannot fully say that these catastrophic events have not happened in the past, at worst. The deadliest hurricane in U.S. history was not Hurricane Katrina. But one that hit Galveston, Texas centuries ago, says scientist John Christie of the University of Alabama. A storm wave caused a sudden rise of four feet in water depth. Shortly afterwards, an entire city was underwater to a maximum depth of 15 feet. John Christie also says that hurricanes have not become more frequent or intense. Will our grandchildren live to see the penguins in the ice glaciers, or will it be too late? The slogan theorists use to instill action towards stopping global warming. 
But the melting is not necessarily due to global warming, it's mother nature. Uh, ice glaciers are melting around the world, and many fear that it will cause flooding. But the melting is not necessarily, not necessarily due to carbon dioxide. Um, in an article posted on glacierbay.org, says that naturalist John Muir discovered that the ice in Glacier Bay, Alaska, had retreated more than 30 miles from 1879, and by 1916 had melted back 60 miles, all by natural warming cycles. Now that I've talked about natural disasters, I'll now talk about carbon dioxide. Scientists say the cause of global warming is due to high levels of carbon dioxide, which is, which is produced by cars, homes, humans, and just about anything that has to do with technology. But carbon dioxide can be beneficial and not threatening to life. Carbon dioxide is currently at 370 ppm. For it to be dangerous, it would have to be at 15,000 ppm. That cannot be reached even if every fossil fuel was burned, says the editor of GlobalWarmingLife.com. Um, plants are also in need of carbon dioxide. Thousands of studies show that high levels of carbon dioxide can, be, can benefit the plants and allow them to reproduce more. So, in conclusion, these changes of weather and recent disasters are not affiliated with global warming. We cannot conclude that man has altered climate, caused natural disasters, and created something that is non-existent. Evidence is shown through history where natural disasters and climate were even worse than what it is today, and carbon dioxide was at a normal compared to today. This does not mean that we can carry on with polluting the world for the realization that we humans as a race are far too young to fully understand how the world works and its cycles. So we should not create a persona such as global warming to blame for what is nature cycles. Thank you.